بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس آئی ایم عارف اینڈ آئی ویلکم یو آل ان ٹوڈے سیشن اینڈ ویل ٹوڈے ٹو ایکسیس دا نوٹ بک فار ٹوڈے سیشن یو کین ایکسیس دا کورس پیج آن مائی پرسنل ویب سائٹ عارف بٹ ڈاٹ می یو کین کلک دا اپروپریٹ لنک انڈر دا لیکچر ریسورس کالم اوور ہیئر ٹو ویو دا نوٹ بک ان این بی ویور اینڈ ڈن اٹ آن لائن ان بائنڈر Uh, the other way is to download uh, the notebook from uh, the course uh, GitHub account, RFPUCIT. And uh, all the notebooks of this course are housed in this uh, public uh, data science repository. Well, this is the note, uh, Jupyter Notebook dashboard running locally on my uh, machine at port uh, 8888. And uh, here is the uh, notebook for lecture number 3.10 of the third module Python Programming for Data Scientists. for the course titled Tools and Techniques for Data Science. Uh, my dear students, uh, in the last session we started with the uh, uh, Pandas library and uh, I gave you an overview of the Pandas uh, data frame and we discussed its anatomy. And we have seen that every Pandas data frame is composed of uh, a series object. So I will uh, like to spend one session on the uh, pandas series data structure before we jump into the pandas data frames. Uh, you can read pandas uh, uh, documentation from this link and well this is the agenda for uh, today's session. Uh, we will quickly have an overview of uh, the pandas series uh, data structure. We will learn to create the series object from python list, numpy arrays, python dictionary and from a scalar value. We'll also learn how to create an empty series object. I will discuss certain attributes of Pandas series object and then uh, the important part is understanding the concept of index in series and its usage. And uh, uh, the indices of a series are used in identification that is accessing the elements, the selection, filtering and subsetting. And finally, in case of arithmetic operations, they are used for alignment purpose. So let me install uh, Pandas. If you have not installed it, uh, on my machine it is, uh, version is 1.3.4. Okay, so uh, this is the image that gives you an overview of uh, the Pandas series object. Well, uh, the series object is a one dimensional array capable of holding uh, uh, a sequence of values. And these can be of any data types, integer, floating point, uh, strings, Python objects. Over here right now there are floating point numbers. And every value has an associated index. Uh, by default, uh, the index has a value of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. However, you can have uh, a string uh, indices, also called labels, associated with every value of a series. Uh, my dear students, you can imagine uh, this pandas series as a column of a spreadsheet or uh, the column of a pandas data frame object. In order to create a series, you, you can use the pt.series method and you can pass four arguments. The only required argument uh, probably is the data. If you skip that as well, it will create an empty uh, series object with a warning. Anyway, this data can be a Python list. It can be a numpy array or it can be a Python dictionary as well. Uh, this index, if you do not provide this index, uh, it will default to uh, Uh, these uh, numbers starting from 0 to the length of the series minus 1. And these series object, uh, these uh, indices need not to be unique. Although you should try that, you should have unique values over here. Okay, so uh, these indices are used for three purposes. We will see these in detail. As far as the data type is concerned, optionally you can assign a valid numpy data type to a series object. If you don't specify that, it will be inferred from the data. For example, over here in this case, if you see pg.series list1, name is equal to marks. I have not mentioned the data type, but from the data type of this list elements, it has derived that the type is float64. And the last is the name. If you mention the name, this is again optional. If you mention the name, uh, the name comes up over here and this name can be later used if you are uh, using this series object to uh, create it a column of our data frame. Great, enough of theory. Let's jump into the practical part. 
So let me create a series object from an, a, a list. You see, this is a list. I have created a series object. Note this empty value over here. This is represented over here. And I have just passed a single argument to the series method. And that is the list of values I want to add on to this series object. And you see it has implicitly uh, uh, taken up the data type that is the object type and uh, of course the series uh, indices of this series starts from 0 1 2 3 and so on okay so remember uh, a difference between uh, a numpy array and a series object has, is that that the series object has a very thickly associated indices with its values and we can always change them as well while in numpy arrays we cannot do that okay so over here i have specified the indices of my own i have passed the index argument to this series method and this time uh, the series object that has been created has these string indices and remember they are not unique okay and uh, finally you can have uh, the nn values as well in inside a series object and remember we talked about nan nan is i triple seven five four the floating point representation of uh, not a number and it can act as a placeholder for any missing values in the numeric data great uh, well you can mention the d type uh, over here i have integers and if I do not mention the type, it will be taken as uh, int64. I want to conserve space. So I have mentioned np.uint8. So that they should take only 8 bits in memory. Great. And uh, finally over here, I have mentioned the name. I have passed the name argument to the series method so that I can have a name of this series to be used later. After list, you can always create a series from a numpy array. You see, I have created a numpy array using the np.a range method. Generated a series of values from 0 to 3. So they have been assigned to this. Over here, I have used uh, some random floating point values. So, and of course, you can create uh, a Python series object from a dictionary. In case once you create it from a dictionary, remember this, these key values will become the indices. Note that I have not passed the index argument to this series method. So it has implicitly taken these key values of the dictionary as indices. Great. And finally, you can generate a, a, a series object from a, a scalar value and you can create an empty series object as well remember if you do not pass, pass this float 64 it may give you a warning so better to pass one argument let's talk about different attributes of a pandas series object and most of them apply to the pandas data frame as well and over here let me create a python dictionary having certain values over here and let me access the name attribute since I have mentioned the name attribute. So we'll, I will get the name. You can access all the attributes of a series object using uh, the name of the series object. This S followed by a dot notation. Well, this index attributes of a series object return the list of indices. So it is returning all the indices. The values attribute will return the values. So it is returning all the values. This D type attribute will return the data type of the underlying data. So you see data type is object over here. So we got an O over here. Great. And this shape attribute uh, tells you the shape of this series. It will always be a single value tuple having seven because we have seven values. In case of Pandas data frame, we will have two values over here. Well, the n bytes attribute uh, return the uh, number of bytes that the underlying uh, data is taking. So we have seven elements. Each element is taking eight bytes. So the size is 56. Makes sense. Uh, the, uh, sorry, the n bytes uh, gives you 56. The size attribute, of course, has uh, the number of elements in the underlying series. 
and the dimension of course is 1 in this case as NANS is a good attribute that normally turns off when you have uh, NAN values in the data. So we do not have an NAN value. Great. Let's talk about the index of our series. So this is uh, uh, important you, for you to understand because this will help you out uh, while understanding the complex topics of the Pandas data frame as well. <clears throat> well, my dear students, every series object as shown over here in this picture has an associated index with every item or with every value. And this Panda series object supports both type of indices, integer based as well as string based. By default, they will be generated from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on to uh, the length of this series object minus 1. And if you want, you can have the uh, strings as well. And these indices are basically uh, used for uh, uh, all the identification, selection and alignment purposes. Uh, when this indices, index is unique, as in this case, uh, pandas will uh, use a hash table to map uh, uh, these keys to value and searching can be done in big O of one time, that is in constant time. And if you have non-unique values over here, but if the values are sorted, pandas will use the binary search, will of course take logarithmic time. And if this uh, index is randomly ordered, searching will take linear time. So you should uh, make up your mind uh, for what purpose you want to use this series and you need to keep these series uh, uh, in a, a unique fashion uh, so that the uh, Searching can be done in constant time if you are interested in the search operations. Anyway, so uh, let's, uh, before I, I, I tell you the use of this index in, for these three operations, uh, let me tell you how we can change the index of a series object. My dear friends, once an object is created, you can always change the series later on. Okay, uh, we have always uh, already seen above that if we create a series object from a dictionary, the keys of the dictionary become the index. And if we create a series object from a NumPy array, uh, the indices default from 0 to uh, onward. And if we uh, assign the indices of our own choice, uh, so they can be integers as well as strings. So let's see, over here in this case, I'm not assigning anything. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. These are the indices. The index attribute uh, of this series object can be assigned new values of the index. For example, over here, let me generate a, a NumPy array using the randint method of the random module of the NumPy, uh, having the size of 5 and the values ranging from randomly from the 100 to uh, 200. So these are the values that are assigned to this array. And we are assigning these five, five values to this index. I hope this makes sense. So these five values have been assigned to this. Let me run it again and again and again. So uh, the easiest way to change the index of a series object is to reassign uh, some values to the index attribute of that series object. Great. Uh, you can always use a list to assign values or uh, to a series object. Let's suppose that we have uh, this series ob object. We have created the series object using the series method and we have not passed any index argument to the series method. So that's why we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. These are the indices. Let me create a list of indices and assign that list of indexes to the index attribute of this series object and you see now this time we have uh, the index object having values num1, num2, num3 and the data type is object. Remember in this case the searching will take much time. Okay so let's talk about the first use of index now. Well my dear students the uh, main purpose of index is to identify or access the element of uh, the series object. So this S1 sub operator 2, subscript operator 2 is going to access this 0, 1 and 2. So this value. Other than using this uh, subscript operator in which you can mention the integer indices as well as the string indices, you can use this lock method as well using this dot notation S dot lock. 
although this is a method but we normally use a subscript operator with this and uh, once you use s.lock method you can specify the integer label as well as the string label so if we have integer indices we can use s.lock if you have string indices we can use s.lock and remember uh, for this subscript operator and for this lock method we are using these indices whatever they are there is a third technique that is uh, i i lock this i lock is a method let me put a bracket with this as well this i lock is a method uh, that searches for an element based on the position remember my dear students this is very important to understand this i lock method access the element based on the position not by the index and the position will always remain 0 1 2 3 4 and so on the position has nothing to do with these indices or the labels they may be same in certain scenarios but i lock is position based not index based and soon i will clarify this once we will do it practically and more or less this i lock always support uh, also support negative indexing as well and we know that uh, the index minus one start from the last value of the series object okay well take a deep breath let me take it at least uh, let's start with the identification of this uh, series object by 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 indices or by position so let me first create an an object i have created a series object with these indices 5 10 15 20 and 25 remember these 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 are numbers but they are not 0 1 2 3 4 i have intentionally done this so that you should have a fair idea of how this work so i can access using this index to subscript operator so you see s20 will access the value hadid which is at index 20 if i use 2 over here you will get an error so remember in this subscript operator i am mentioning the index so if i mention 25 over here i will access this mujahid how this is making sense and similarly this lock method always access based on the index so if i access s dot log 20 so it will access of course the value at index 20 great and if i give it let's suppose 3 so it will raise an error because there is no index 3 in this series let me make it 20 again and this i lock method is actually position based so you do not pass it a index so this 20 there is there is no in uh, there is no position 20 over here we have index 0 1 2 3 and 4 uh, let me say it uh, position instead of index so position 0 position 1 2 3 and 4 so we have no position 20 over here so this will flag an error however if i mention 3 so this is a position so we have accessed hadith great i hope this is making sense and similarly you can access the multiple values by uh, mentioning a list inside the subscript operator comma separated list so we will get the value at index 20 and the value at index 5 using this uh, subscript operator as well as using the lock method and remember in case of i lock you need to mention the positions and i have mentioned position 3 and 0 let's check out 0 we have rauf 1 2 and 3 and at 3 we have hadith so i will get hadith and rauf great my dear students please have a very clear concept as how we can use this subscript operator and this log and i log method with the accessing of elements inside a series okay uh, 
let's talk about uh, string indices now in this case i have uh, again a series object but this time it has uh, associated indices which are actually strings so i need to mention this index inside a single code to access the value so i've accessed row using the lock method as well as using the simple subscript operator in case of i lock my dear students you cannot access it this way because i lock always work for uh, the position so this will flag an error a value error however you can always access using position so i lock work fit with position only and of course you can access multiple values using simply the subscript operator and passing a list inside it and this time the list should have comma separated uh, strings a uh, valid strings meant, uh, representing the indices of though that that series object similarly the lock can also work fine in case of i lock once again you cannot use this you cannot mention the uh, index literally so it will raise an error okay so you however can use this uh position position 2 and position 0 okay position 2 0 1 2 this mars and position 0 is row so we will get mars and row in this case great uh, my dear students please do play around before we move ahead you should have a very fair idea of using the simple subscript operator the lock method and the i lock method and their nitty gritties uh let's move on to the selection we have seen uh, uh, the indexing now let's see slicing as well we have uh, already know the slice object have three components start stop and step uh this slice uh, component works pretty fine with this uh, series object as well and this uh, slice object can work with uh, simple subscript operator you can use it inside the lock method and the i lock method as well uh if you uh do not uh, supply uh, this uh, stop argument the stop argument remember uh if you do not specify the stop or the start argument or the step argument the start is by default zero that is the first value stop is by default the last value and step is by default one uh one point that you should keep in mind that if you are using the subscript operator uh the stop argument is not inclusive as usual as we have seen in the case of numpy arrays as well this will not be inclusive in case of the integer indices but this will be inclusive in case of string indices let me repeat it again uh since the series object can have integer indices as well as string indices so in case of integer indices if you supply the stop value it is not inclusive but in case of uh, strings it is inclusive as far as this lock is concerned whether uh, the indices are integer based or uh, they are strings this will be inclusive in both the cases and i lock there is no issue with i lock because it is position based uh, one more important thing that i have mentioned in uh, bold over here and that is once you slice a python series object you get a view of the original object and which is similar to a shallow copy that means if you modify that uh, new object the change will also be visible in the other series object as well so let's see this so this is a, a simple series object that i have created for this example uh, for this uh, slicing slicing task i am just using a two colon four remember i am using integer indices so this four will not be inclusive i will just get this mars and hadith great and uh, in case of lock remember whether you use the integer index or you use the label index this stop will be inclusive so i will get uh, two mars hadith and mujahid as well great and in case of i lock or naturally i lock is position based so uh, this four will never be inclusive so we will just get two values 
hope this makes sense okay so let's talk about the string indices this time i have created an example uh, a series object in which we have string indices num1 2 3 4 and num5 let's see in case of uh, simple subscript operator i have mentioned uh, the slice starting num2 and ending num4 and this num4 this hadith will not be inclusive this will not in be inclusive in case of integer indices However, in this case, in case of strings, it will be inclusive. So, Arif, Maaz and Hadith. My dear students, this is important and sometimes uh, people forget it and they have issues. Remember, when you are using simple subscript operator and we have integer indices, uh, this stop is not inclusive. But in case of string indices, this stop is inclusive okay so in case of lock naturally uh, as i have said before as well the stop uh, argument this num4 is inclusive for s dot log for both integer and label indices so whether you are using the integer or a string index this will be inclusive and in case of i log it's very simple because it is position based so there is not an issue so that is the reason uh, uh, while uh, uh, using uh, data frames most of uh, people prefer using i log so that they don't have such issues fine and of course we have step as well and this is again very interesting uh, we have num2 i want to slice from num2 to num5 with a step of 2 so num2 to num5 with a step of 2 so num2 will be there this num3 will not be there so num4 will be there so in the output we'll have Arif and Hadith. Great. This is great. And of course, negative slicing works fine. Fine. The last use of uh, the index uh, attribute uh, that is for the alignment purpose. My distance we have seen in case of the NumPy operations as well uh, and in series as well. Once we add or subtract or multiply or divide or perform any arithmetic operation on the two series objects, uh, to produce a third series object uh, the operation is done on each corresponding pair of elements and this corresponding pair of elements in case of series is uh, based on the index matching index let's understand this with an example and in this example uh, i have a series object in which i have the default indices that is 0 1 2 3 4 so these are the default indices for series 1 and the values are these and this so let's see that i just want to add this s1 with this s2 remember in this case we don't have any issue at all because the object the value in this series at index 0 will be added with the value in this series at index 0 the value in this series at index 4 that is 9 will be added to the value with this series at index 4 and we will get the result i hope this makes sense you can you can add up things like this the problem arises when <coughs> we have different uh, indices let's suppose in this case i have generated uh, these two objects s1 and s2 S1 has the value 6975 at indices 0, 1, 2, 3, while S2 has uh, the values 8621 at indices 0, 2, 3, 5. So now once I will perform this addition operation on these two series objects, the value at series 0 will be added with the value at series 0 over here. So 6 plus 8, this 1 at index 1 in this series we have the value 9 but we do not have a value 9 over here so this will generate a nan result try to understand this over here in this series object we have a value at index 1 but over here we do not have a value at index 1 so in the resulting series object we have a nan Similarly, over here we have a value at index 5, but in this series object we do not have a value at index 5, so we have got 
and NAN at index 5 and for the rest they are working fine. So this is uh, the problem that is while performing uh, mathematical operations on series having mismatched indices all missing values are filled with NAN by default. And the solution to this problem is you should prefer using the s.add and s.sub methods instead of using these operators because to those we can easily pass the fill value. Let me run it. You see, we do not have the NAN now. The fill value is zero. Wherever we have NAN at that place, zero is placed. Great. And over here as well, this is also a similar example. We have string indices now. You can check out over here. I have just used the add method instead. So wherever we have the missing value over here, we have the index num8, which has a value of 3. It is not over here. So num8, we have the value of 3. So we do not have the NAN value in this case. Well, my dear students, I am skipping uh, these topics, uh, fancy and boolean indexing, a resetting of index using the reset index method, the pop, drop, append and update methods. Uh, inshallah, while doing the Pandas data frame uh, sessions, we will uh, uh, touch upon all these uh, and do uh, go through with these uh, 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 a brief comparison between the Pandas series and the NumPy array. Okay, so well, uh, my dear students, that is all for today's session. Uh, we will inshallah continue our journey to learn Python programming for data scientists in our next session. I hope today's session was informative for you all. If you have liked it, please subscribe my YouTube channel and share it with your friends. I wish you all the best. Happy learning and Allah Hafiz.